Hello and welcome to another Lamp Bible Study. My name is James, your Bible reader and host for Lamp Bible Study. Super excited to be joining together in fellowship once again as we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom through His Holy Word. Um, we will be picking it back up in the book of Exodus in the King James Version in chapter 6. And so today has been a it's been an interesting day <laughs> and every day is a blessing and I hope and pray every day and I hope and pray everything's going well with you. And if not, welcome, welcome to another Lamp Bible Study. We made it. <laughs> Whew, time to breathe in some air, to receive the Lord's love and that, that just hug that, that the Holy Spirit, that the Lord provides for us in our everyday lives. Amen and hallelujah. So, there's a lot to go over today in the next several chapters, so we're going to get right into it. Let's get started in Exodus chapter 6 in the King James Version. <clears throat> then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spoke un er, and God spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out of, from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me, for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it you for an inheritance. I am the Lord." And Moses spake so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go in, speak unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spake before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, <clears throat> and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel, and unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These be the heads of their fathers' houses, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hanok and Pelu, Hezron and Carmi, these be the families of Reuben, and the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, and Jamin, and Ohad, and Jachin, or Jachin, and Zohar, and Shol, the son of a Canaanitish woman, these are the families of Simeon, and these are the names of of the sons of Levi according to their generations, Gershon and Kohath and Merari, and the years of the life of Levi were in hundred thirty and seven years. The sons of Gershon, Libni and Shimi, according to their families, and the sons of Kohath, Amram and Izar and Hebron and Uziel, and the years of the life of Kohath were an hundred thirty and three years. And the sons of Marari, Mahali, and Mushi, these are the families of Levi according to their generations. And Amram took him Jochebed, his father's sister, to wife, and she bare him Aaron and Moses. 
and the years of the life of Amram were an hundred and thirty and seven years. And the sons of Izar, Korah, and Nepheg, and Zikri, and the sons of Uziel, Mishil, and Elizaphan, and Zithri. And Aaron took him, Elisheba, daughter of Aminadab, sister of Nashon, to wife. And she bare him Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar, and the sons of Korah, As- Asir, and Elkanah, and Abasaph. These are the families of the Korhites. And Eleazar, Aaron's son, took him one of the daughters of Petil to wife, and she bare him Phineas. These are the heads of the fathers of the Levites according to their families. These are that Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies. These are they which spake to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are that Moses and Aaron. And it came to pass on the day when the Lord spake unto Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak thou unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say unto thee. And Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, lips, and how shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? Okay, so there was a lot here. One thing that we are going to hear, even from past to present, is one of the names of God. <clears throat> so let's go back over that. Chapter 6, verse 3. And I appeared unto him, unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but my but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. So we know that the Lord has many names, that we know that he is all power, all glory, all holy, the good shepherd, the provider of our salvation, the redeemer. He is Emmanuel. He is Christ. He is God. And so here is another name for the Lord Almighty, Jehovah, and God with us, and knowing what Jehovah is and what the Lord represents. He is the great I am and bringing past to present. You may have heard of that, of that name, even as of today, Jehovah. And so uh, now you can see it comes all the way back from Exodus chapter six, where the Lord is telling, talking to Moses and telling him that he is reaffirming that he is the great I am. He is the shepherd. Continue to have faith and rely on him. And that's what Moses is doing. But as we can see, he is also questioning himself because he sees that things have happened. He's went there. He's provided the message. But the Pharaoh has acted maliciously towards the Hebrews. And therefore, the people there are not happy with Moses and Aaron. And so here he is being told once again to go before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let, his, to let the people go. And so he's telling him, Again, all the way in verse 30, uh, and Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? Because there was already doubt, there was already issues with the Hebrews that were there, and now he has to go back to Pharaoh and once again request, even though Pharaoh has said no. So, lots of things here, and we can bring past and present with, uh, There's so there's two points there. The first one is, the many names of our Lord and Savior. Take note, because we're going to, throughout the Bible, throughout our read, again, you're going to notice, and I want you to take note this time, because I know in the NIV version on the previous Bible studies, we did not take note of that. But this time, take note of the many names of God that's going to come up um, and throughout the Bible. And then also, so that's point one. Before we go on, though, to point two, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Okay, now on to point two <laughs> is <clears throat> sometimes we will get, we will be moved by the Spirit and we will have some doubts. 
And what Moses is doing here, he is telling the Lord, he's speaking to the Lord. He's saying, look, I went once and this hasn't ha it didn't turn out good. You're asking me to go again? I don't think I can, my, my speech or how I'm coming across, how, how I'm requesting it, something that I'm doing wrong. Now, remember, the Lord has already told him, and you can go back to the previous Bible study right before this, this and just now as well, that it's going to take a strong arm, that the Pharaoh is not going to let the people go, and that it's going to take God. And so Moses is trying to come to that realization. And over the course of time, over the RE today, we will see the more and more that he continues to rely and have faith and grow stronger and closer to the Lord. And that is the second point. Growing stronger and close, closer to our Lord and throughout our life. Because we are to walk in the Spirit. We are to walk as a reflection of our Lord and Savior. And in order to do that, we need to draw near to him at all times and continue to do so. Continue to strive to be Christ-like, to be like the Lord. And so that way we can definitely be reflections of the Lord. We under I understand it, it's it's difficult. No, we cannot make ourselves holy. The Lord can the Lord can bless us with um, with his holy presence. No, we cannot. No, we are sinners. Definitely. Absolutely. However, we have been forgiven. And when we do know that we've made a mistake, we have someone that we can turn to and say, please, Lord, forgive me and still be utilized by the Lord, whether it's an example or for us or for others or something that we can grow stronger in life and come to the realization and understanding just how much wisdom that the Lord our God has. Before we go on, though, to the next chapter, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? I know there's sermon upon sermon here, but there there's a lot still to come. So let's continue to read in Exodus chapter 7 in the King James Version. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he <clears throat> send the children of Israel out of his land, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so did they. Did, so did they. And Moses was fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old, when they spake unto Pharaoh. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Shew a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, and uh, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuseth to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river, river's brink. Against he come, 
And the rod, which was turned to a serpent, shall thou take in thine hand. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood, and the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt." And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians digged around about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled after that the Lord had smitten the river. Okay, so there was a lot here in particular. Um, and so we get right into it where the Lord tells um, Moses and Aaron that I'm going to show, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to show you that I'm going to pull the people out with my strong arm. And he tells Moses and Aaron exactly how he's going to do it and what is going to happen. He uh, and starts in uh, seven verse three, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiple and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. And so, why? What was going on? Well, here's a group of people. Once again, God is God. He is the one that created all things. And here's a group of people that have. Now, been living with people who worship the one true God, however, they worship gods. And like I mentioned before in the previous Bible study, we'll come, uh, come to find out later in the word how more they, they're not gods. In fact, in some instances, they could be even fallen, fallen, um, angels who became demons, they are no longer a part of grace. They're no longer part uh, of the Holy Lord. And so, um, but that is something that we'll get into later on and we can uh, talk about that. Um, but right now we're talking about how the people of this land at this time decided that they had multiple gods and that Pharaoh himself was God, right? And so there was importance that the Lord had to make a distinction between what's real and what's humanistically fake. <laughs> and I believe bringing past to present, the Lord still does that to this day. Can I get a name? <laughs> Amen. He still does that to this day. So backing up one verse um, to verse two, thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that, oh, actually verse 1, and the, let me back up to verse 1, and the Lord said unto Moses, see, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. As in, the only thing that Pharaoh would understand is speaking to what he would think or consider was another god. 
Moses and Aaron were the messengers. Moses and Aaron were the ones telling him about the one and true God. Then he goes on to say <clears throat> that uh, in verse four, but Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. Okay. So first point, the Lord is God and he has been showing that he is God, but you have a group of people that they didn't, they didn't believe at the time. So not only that, but they are abusing people who do believe in the Lord. So he is telling him, telling them that these people, because they refuse to even acknowledge me, that they have their own gods and they believe that Pharaoh is God himself, well, I'm going to show some judgments on this because the Lord is righteous and holy and he's given plenty of opportunities and he's going to continue to for even Pharaoh to say, you know what, this is incorrect. I need to understand who the Lord, who the true Lord God is. And we're going to see as we continue to read what's going to happen. So does bringing past to present, does the Lord still to this day show a separation between what is fake and what who God is righteousness and holy yes absolutely every single day every single moment the Lord is constantly at work for us and a lot of times there are things in life that we don't understand especially when we are walking in the faith that we don't understand and I mentioned this before in the previous Bible study where things happen but we are unharmed or untouched or we are protected during those calamities there's a reason for that the reason is we have the good shepherd we have the redeemer the provider of salvation and he always has his eye on his sheep, us, you and I. And so think about those things in life, especially when you see things happen, but you're going unscathed, you're going untouched. Why is that? Well, there's always a reason and there's a reason and all good things come from above. Before we go on to point number two, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Okay, point number two, again, is starting in verse five. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so did they. So they understood that the Lord was going to be at work and that they had to be there to fulfill uh, their their portion, their role into what was going to happen. And they understood what the Lord was getting ready to do. They didn't see what was going to happen. They don't know what was going to reaction, you know, what was going to happen uh, furthermore, but they knew that they were there and they had they knew that they had a purpose and that they knew that there was more to come and the Lord was at work. And so bringing past to present, that still remains true today in our lives, that the Lord is always at work for us. So continue to have faith, continue to rely on our Lord and Savior. If you're just joining us and you're still deciding, you know, you're here for a reason for one, um, but you're still, you're not quite sure, is there even a God? I want to tell you absolutely yes. <laughs> and another thing is that he knows you. He knows you by name. And those things that you don't quite understand, he wants to reveal to you. He is our Lord and Savior. He is God. And, um, he, uh, you know, he saved us. He saved us not only from in, from ourselves, but he saved us from an eternity away from him. He is our Christ. He is our King. He is Emmanuel. He is Jesus. Thank you so much. And so when we go about our days and we are 
not certain, rely on the Lord. And if you are here and you're just thinking about it, pray. You never know what may happen. (laughs) You never know. Amen and hallelujah. So before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? We'll read over this. How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? There's a reason and there's a purpose, and you have a purpose as well. Let's continue to read in Exodus chapter 8 in the King James Version. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs, and the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs, kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers and over the ponds and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee and from thy houses and from thy servants, and from thy people, they shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs, which which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man. And in beasts, all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground wherein, or whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall shall this sign be. And the Lord did so. 
And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away and treat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Okay, so again, a lot here in chapter 8. Okay, so one thing that you may have started to take note is that when these things do happen, that first, at the first couple of wonders that the Lord is doing, the magicians somehow are able to recreate it in a certain way. Not necessarily in the magnitude, but we're able to duplicate in specific magician ways. It just talks about um, trickery, etc. cetera, that um, those things until a certain point so where does that certain point start okay so in verse 16 and the lord said unto moses uh, in uh, chapter 8 verse 16 and the lord said unto moses say unto aaron stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become lice throughout all the land of egypt and then going down to 18, and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Okay, so I want you to take note of this because we're going to talk about this again when we get all the way to Revelations. All right, on to the point. What God can do is always perfect. What man can do, what we think we can do, is not. A lot of times we try to do things, we try to strive for things, and yes, we can do some accomplishments, but it's not always 100% right. Hmm, wonder why. When we rely on ourselves, when we rely on what we think is correct or we wanna do or we think is the answer, be prepared for consequences. Whereas all good things come from the Lord. They work every single time. There's no doubt. Whatever it may be, it could be a movement. It could be a healing. It could be economy. It could be a judgment. It could be something in the family. It could be whatever it may be. When it comes from God, it is good. It is correct. It is right. It is just. It brings peace. It brings what it's supposed to bring in the Lord's time, on time. Think about those things in life as we continue our journey with the Lord. There's a lot here. Uh, before we go on, because there's another point here, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Before I get on to point number two, um, this is just a little um, reintroduction, etc., when it comes to whenever I ask what kind of thoughts or feelings, uh, how does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Um, 
we set aside our own thoughts and feelings and then we listen to what the Holy Word, what the Holy Spirit has, what the Lord has to offer us and see it and then bring back our thoughts and feelings and see if those align with what the Lord had intended. Also, whenever I'm asking questions, whenever we're asking questions um, or a saying statements like take note of this or whatever or things that we've read um this we may be reading passages in the holy book and what the lord has for you the lord definitely has for you take note of those things um these are just things that i come across when i come across and read things that i believe the holy spirit because i always pray and i i pray that i never uh, and led astray myself but you know and, and, and because of my own thoughts and feelings but I always say you know you may receive something else you may, may receive a message for your life and your journey with the Lord that is excellent that is wonderful amen and hallelujah that is what it's supposed to be that is that is this these are just things that to think about in our life um if it even applies to you, but you may be reading along with us and getting something that applies to you. Boom. Amen. And hallelujah. So, um, but there's many different points in here. And of course we'll be re coming back through again. Um, there was another thing in here and that was take note of Pharaoh and his reactions. So all of these things are devastating to the land. They're devastating to the people. The frogs during this time, disgusting, horrible, wretched. They smell, they stink. Uh, when the blood killed all the fish, the fish stank, the, they, they couldn't drink water. Everything was catastrophic, not only to just Pharaoh in his royal palace, the pe his people the Egyptian, the people of the land were being harmed. And what was Pharaoh's reaction over and over and over again? I want you to take note of something. And I want you to think of a word. I want you to think of something. And it, that word is pride. Every single time, what was the Lord or what was Pharaoh's reaction to what the Lord was bringing about and what Moses and Aaron, the messengers of the Lord, were stating. Verse 32, and Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. We're going to see just how devastating it becomes for the people because of one person's pride. Think about that. This person is supposed to be a leader. When we do have a good leader, his name is the Good Shepherd. His name is Jehovah. His name is Jesus. His name is Christ. His name is Emmanuel. He is all power, all glory, all holy, the Good Shepherd, the Redeemer, the provider of our salvation. He is God. But when you have man getting into his own thoughts and feelings, and believing that they can do things without the Lord, in particular, bringing past to present, can devastate others. Is that leading in love? Is that being a leader of any kind? Or is that being catastrophic, dangerous? Think about that. Because that can be seen in many different areas of our life. Uh, family, friends, work, community, school, even um, places of prayer, even places of worship. When there are thoughts that are not aligned with the Lord and we are taking control, our humanistic side is wanting to do things of the flesh, that can be catastrophic. And it's only our pride that's blocking us. Or blocking them. Think about that. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? I know. A lot in here. Let's continue to read Exodus chapter 9 in the King James Version. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go 
that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the mules, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children's of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died, but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take your handfuls of ash, uh, ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt. And shall be a boil, breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven. And it became a boil, breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to shew in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Send therefore now, and gather thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them, and they shall die. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb of the field, and break every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. And Pharaoh sent, and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Entreat the Lord, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, 
and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not fear the Lord God. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bold. But the wheat and the rice were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord, and thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go. Israel go as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Okay, again, there's a lot here. Two more points, so we'll, we'll hit them quickly. Um, one is a follow-up. The first one is, what's going on? What What is, is there starting to be a difference even in the Egyptians, even in the people uh, that believe in these uh, things, in, in these gods? Yeah. Listen here. Uh, he, so he that, in verse 20, uh, chapter 9, verse 20, he that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. Was there some changing going on? I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would say so. The people were being affected more so and more over. But, man, we are hard-headed. Bringing past to present. Are we that hard-headed? <laughs> are we hard-headed? Okay, I know you've heard the term hard-headed. We already know where Pharaoh's going. Hard-headedness, being defiant, thinking we know it all—not not necessarily know it all—but we have a decision, we have the answer, and we're 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 sticking to it. Even when it could be catastrophic, even when it's not actually correct, but because of our pride, we have to be hard-headed. Do you see where that leads to? Do you see that the Lord throughout time, throughout lives, throughout people's walk with the Lord, without even people that are not walking with the Lord, provide opportunities, provide signs, provides things to say, hey, I'm here. Look for me. I'm right here. I can save you. I can guide you. I can protect you. I can give you the real answer. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I know it all, literally. There's no other that knows everything, just me. And I made you in my image, and I know you by name. Why is there a reason for us to be even hard-headedness? Well, there isn't. It's just part of sin. It's just part of wickedness. So let's get over it. <laughs> so let's get over being hard-headed. And be, be more listening to what the Holy Spirit, listening to what the Lord, and then when the Lord speaks, have faith. Amen and hallelujah. Before we go on to the next point, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? When we read over this, how, do, how read over it. How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Looking at, I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping not to have any more technical difficulties because <laughs> it's been happening again. Okay, so there's another point here. And, um, mm, 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 mm. so what did Pharaoh say this time? He said in verse 28, entreat the Lord for it is, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to 27, so verse 27, chapter nine, verse 27. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. 
Hmm. Interesting. Some more devastation, catastrophic things have been happening right in front of him. And he is now saying something that he could have said from the very beginning. But what happens? Verse 35. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Why? Because verse 34, right before it. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. So not just him, but his royal, you know, his people that are around him. They were like, oh, let's, you know, the devastation, the catastrophe. This is, you know, it's been catastrophic, but it ceased. We're over it now, you know. This God stopped, so who's to say that we can't just continue on? <sighs> Bringing past to present. Does that, ha does that sound familiar when bad things all of a sudden cease and we're just like, yeah. And then we go back either into a pattern or we start thinking about things or doing things that we shouldn't be doing. You no. Know, went and said, hey, I'm going to stop cursing people out when, I, and, and when I've been cut off in traffic. And we say that and we, we claim it in front of people or we just, we just tell it to the Lord. And, and the next day you get cut off, what comes flying out of the mouth? These are just things that could happen that I'm thinking of, like just off the top, like but take it even further for yourself. Where does that come from and why? When we walk with the Lord, we put on the full armor of God. When we, and if you've been with us through the King, uh, NIV version, we've read it before and we're going to read it again. So be prepared to hear it again. And we are protected. Those things, those thoughts of wickedness and sin aren't even allowed. They, can't, they don't even come up because we're living in love. We're living in the fruits of the Spirit. So think about those things in your daily, in your daily, every day. And understand, before we go on, though, to the, the next chapter, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? When we read over this, how does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? We're going to go over just a touch today. I can already tell. Um, let's continue to read in Exodus chapter, and I hope I said Exodus in the previous, but it, Exodus chapter 10 in the King James Version. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Moses, go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might shew these my signs before him, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them that ye may know how that I am the Lord. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Else... If thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coasts. And they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill th thy houses and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the man go, that may that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, 
with our sons and with our daughters and with or with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds, will we go? For we must hold a feast unto the Lord. And he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you, as I will let you go, and your little ones. Look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve the Lord, for that ye did desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locust, that they may come upon, up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they before them. There were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees, which the hill had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through all the land of Egypt." Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this, de this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locust and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coasts of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herbs be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not be an hoof be left behind. For therefore must we take to serve the Lord our God, and we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, I will see thy face again no more. Okay, there's a lot here, a lot more to come. Um, but listen to this, because... If you're if you're noticing how is Moses reacting? Even in the previous chapter, even in the previous chapter, he started to understand that the Pharaoh was continually disregarding, you know, asking for relief and then disregarding the relief that he just received and keeping the people of Israel enslaved. So take note about how Moses and Aaron how they're starting to react even to Pharaoh. In verse 3, And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. There's more of a um, presence there. There's more of a... Uh, I have somebody behind me. I have somebody who is with me. I have somebody who is ahead of me. I have somebody that is for me. Bring past to present. That feeling, that sense that Moses and Aaron is, ha is having now, that strength of faith, that's still available to us today. 
Exactly. Think about those things. That strength that we have in times of uncertainty, in times of need, in times of want. When we go to the Lord and seek him fully with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, our, our everything with for, with us, we, we take it to the Lord and we seek him and his guidance. He is with us and he will provide the way and he will strengthen us and he will guide us and he will provide wisdom. He will provide what we need in the time that we need it. So think about those things in life. Before we go on to the next point, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? And lastly, before we do a quick review, because there's a ton here. Take note of this because it's a little cliffhanger, <laughs> if you want to say. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more. For in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, I will see thy face again no more. Hmm, interesting. Well, take note of that because more to come in the next uh, Bible study, in the next land Bible study that we'll get to in the next chapters over, th over that decision that Pharaoh has decided to make. And in life, that decision is a decision for us all. Bringing past to present. Do we believe? Do we believe and hear the Lord? Or there are those that will not believe. There are those that, but we don't know. That's not our task. Our task is to spread the holy gospel, to love our neighbor as ourself, because the Lord knows us all by name, and the Lord is love. And we can be reflections of the Lord by living in the spirit of the Lord. Amen and hallelujah. There's so much here today. There's so much. There's sermon upon sermon. But before we do a quick review, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? We'll read over this. How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Okay, let's do a quick review. We started off in chapter 6 in the King James Version, and there was a lot. <clears throat> Listen to this. Okay, so the... And it came to pass on the day when the Lord spake unto Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak thou unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say unto thee. And that is a, a affirmation after he's now revealed what Hebrews, what Israel uh, knew or what were to come of his name, of God's name, <clears throat> the great I am. All the way back in verse 3, I and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. So he is now providing that strong arm. He is providing that I am with you and that confirmation and strengthening Moses and Aaron, just like he strengthens us. And going on to chapter 7, again, there was a lot here. Um, and, uh, and Pharaoh turned and went, okay, so in 22, uh, and the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also, and the, all the Egyptians digged around, digged round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. So Pharaoh, as you can see, was arrogant and prideful. He was stuck in his ways, and he didn't care what was happening to the people. So think about that. See what kind of devastation that may bring, even as of today. Um, on to chapter 8. Again, sermon upon sermon here. And um, Moses said, um, in verse 29, And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So what was going on? He knew that the Pharaoh was lying he was being deceitful and he didn't want to let the people go so moses was telling him okay 
I wouldn't keep it up if I were you. Let's let's make things right. Let's get in with the Lord and understand what his will is and what he is requesting. Just bring him past to present. Understand what the Lord, who the Lord is, and understand what he wants for your life, which is the best things, not the worst things. We may be, we are the ones that are striving for destruction. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Every day. So we need, we need a savior. What do sheep do? Sheep are constantly at a loss. So they need a shepherd to guide them. And so we have a shepherd, our Lord and Savior. On to uh, chapter 9, uh, verse, again, uh, go, going back uh, to uh, verse uh, 18. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a grievous hail, such has such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. So he's getting ready to perform a miracle, miracle, like something that they've never seen ever before. And he does so. And then what happens? Um, and, but as for thee and thy servants, I know uh, in verse 30, this is Moses talking, but as for Thee and my servants, I know that ye will not fear the Lord God. Have they hardened their heart that much? Wow. And how here is Moses, even to the point of like, I know, like, this is devastating. This is devastating. And yet, instead of listening, instead of helping and turning to God, Harden the heart. And so let us not be as one to be known as someone who's hard-headed. Continuing on to chapter 10, where, again, I want you to take note. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, I will see thy face again no more. Okay, so last point, anger. Sometimes we have to deal with anger, whether it's our, our anger or someone else's anger. Always the best thing to do is give it to the Lord, even if there needs to be space for a moment, even if there needs to be space for a, a time, even if there needs to be, okay, I'm going to move in this direction, but I'm going to still pray. I'm going to still pray that this situation, that this conflict comes to an end. And guess what? Having faith in the Lord God Almighty, the Lord's already at work for us. Amen and hallelujah. With today's Lamp Bible study, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Thank you once again for joining me in another Lamp Bible study. I hope and pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together through His Holy Word. Please continue to pray for me. I will always continue to pray for you. Lamp Bible study comes out every Tuesdays and Thursdays with highlights throughout the week and flashlights on Fridays. Be sure to check out the Instagram page as that does get updated. If you have any praises, prayer requests, questions, concerns, or comments, feel free to leave that in the comment section or even in the Instagram's page as well. If you have any additional praises, prayer requests, questions, concerns, or comments, feel free to, there is an email in the contact section of the YouTube channel. Super excited about our next Lamp Bible study. A lot more to come in the books, book of Exodus as we read uh, what's going to happen uh, with Moses and Pharaoh and the conclusions thereof of this whole uh some people may want to call it an arc <laughs> but it's history it's our history and it the lord is amazing and there's a reason for this um, and we'll get to learn that reason as we continue to read so super excited about our next land bible study i know i'll i will see you there uh, until next time wherever you are have a blessed morning a blessed day a blessed afternoon a blessed evening and a blessed night god bless and jesus loves you